Tommy fucking Shelby. He's bloody amazing. I loved it so much. Oh my God. And with Sadie, I forgot her main character's name. Sabine, you stupid bitch. The main character's name is literally the title, you dumb fuck. Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I will be recommending to you, if you loved this TV show, then you will love this book. It can go the either way around as well. If you love the book, you will love the series. Yes, I'm saying that correctly. I had to think about that real bad. I have four shows and five books in total that I want to recommend you guys. The genres of like the books and the series that I will be recommending are very mixed and I think that there will definitely be something in this video that you will enjoy. So let's just start off with some really hyped books and you all are super excited for the Netflix show that is coming out at the end of April. So I mean I could say if you like these books then watch the show but I think that if you enjoyed Peaky Blinders that you will enjoy the <laughs> Six of Crow Zoology by Lee Bardugo. These books were heavy, so <laughs> that's why I struggled to hold them up. Just also, by the way, look at the gorgeous editions that I have. These are collector's editions and totally worth getting because they are stunning. I'm just gonna like tell the synopsis of Six of Crows because Crooked Kingdom is a sequel and I don't want to spoil anyone. But wait, <laughs> let's first talk about what Peaky Blinders is about. Like perhaps if you've read Six of Crows, you might also be interested in Peaky Blinders. The two sent Sentence synopsis on IMDb says that Peaky Blinders is about a gangster family epic set in 1900s England, centering on a gang who sue razor blades in the peaks of their caps and their fierce boss, Tommy Shelby. Oh, Tommy fucking Shelby. He's bloody amazing. <laughs> Honestly, the show is really dark. It has lots of violence, family drama, but also like fights between the different gangs and every single season you kind of follow a different villain. And why I would recommend Six of Crows is because Tommy Shelby, <laughs> why am I saying that with that accent? I don't know. He reminds me a lot of Kaz Brecker. And in Six of Crows, we follow six different characters. They all are super morally gray and they would be like a very unlikely group to put together. But I assure you, it works in this novel. And they have to, again, fight against an enemy and make a certain heist succeed. It was very entertaining. Again, as with Peaky Blinders, you have lots of morally gray characters and you don't always agree with what they're doing. The action was there. The violence was there. And overall, I feel Feel like if you enjoy the vibe of Peaky Blinders you will also really like the vibe of Six of Crows and even though this is marketed as like a YA fantasy duology it reads like a little bit more for an older audience. I also highly enjoyed Crooked Kingdom but definitely loved Six of Crows a bit more. I would just personally highly recommend it. It's a booktube favorite so if you haven't read it already please do so. Next up I want to share my favorite read of 2021 until so far and this way of storytelling and just the writing style, kind of the characters made me think so much of the end of the fucking world. Fucking. <laughs> this show is so difficult to like tell you what it's about because the plot is so strange but highly enjoyable and it deals with a lot of difficult themes. James is 17 and is pretty sure he is a psychopath. Alyssa, also 17, is the cool and moody new girl at school. The pair make a connection and she persuades him to embark on a road trip in search of her real father. And I think if you loved The End of the Fucking World, you will enjoy The Female of the Species by uh, Mindy McGinnis. Oh my god, this was such a surprisingly pleasant book that I picked up at the beginning of 2021. I just read a couple of <laughs> not so great books and then this one came along. I had it on my shelves for I think about three years already and it just like popped up because I mean look at the color of this cover it's like in your face and I thought that this book was so unique and don't let like the cover throw you off. This is a YA contemporary novel that reads like a murder, like a thriller book, and it was so cool and so different from what I have read before. And it explores some really important themes like rape, so definitely be warned for that if you cannot handle it, like rape culture, and it definitely has some feminist undertones in it as well. I was so surprised and I loved it 
so much. Oh my god, it's been such a long time since I've had a five-star read. So we follow three different perspectives. The first one is of Alex, and her sister has been raped and murdered a couple of years ago, but the person who did this to her sister was never punished for his crimes, and now Alex has done something really bad, and she is also not punished for her crime, and it is a secret that she wants to keep. Things are just not looking really great for her, and then we also follow the perspective of Jack Fisher, and he is like very interested in Alex and what the whole deal is with her. He is the popular guy at school, but he has some like problems of his own. And then the third and final perspective that we follow is that of PK, and that stands for Preacher's Kid, because her father is the preacher of the town, but she has some secrets of herself as well, and she works with Alex at like the animal shelter that they need to do work for with school and stuff and the three are like an unlikely pairing but in some way their stories are kind of like thrown together and I felt like you definitely saw that type of element in the end of the fucking world as well like Alyssa and James are kind of just like thrown together and in the second season you also have like another character who comes across as very murderous and kind of like dangerous but I thought it was such a cool story I think that you will enjoy this book so much if you liked that show I think they are a perfect match a very, very popular book here on booktube is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Morena Garcia. And if you like this book, you will definitely like The Haunting of Hill House. Oh my god, these two stories are perfect. Like, they fit so perfectly with each other. And the funny thing is that I was watching The Hunting of Hill House while I was reading this book around, like, the October, November times, and I would highly recommend it. <laughs> Flashing between past and present, a fractured family confronts haunting memories of their old home and the terrifying events that drove them from it. And with Mexican Gothic, let me grab the book. In this story, we follow our main character called Naomi and her cousin Catalina has moved in with like this English family in like such a big mansion. And she has been writing some really strange letters saying that she can see all these weird things in the house. And, Naom and Naomi's father, <coughs> lunch stuck in my throat. <laughs> and Naomi's father sends her to her cousin and she is kind of like on a mission to find out what is going on and she sees that the house that Catalina is staying in is um is kind of haunted. And I completely imagined Hill House to be the house that Catalina and Naomi were staying in, but um, this book also deals with some really important topics such as racism and the really creepy topic of eugenics and just the family in here is really strange. And in The Haunting of Hill House, I wouldn't necessarily say that the family is really strange, but all of the characters have gone through their own personal issues. And I just think both are amazing and you should both check them out. And then the last book series recommendation is that if you enjoyed Mindhunter, you will love Sadie by Courtney Summers. But it's such a good book, especially the audiobook. Let me tell you again what Mindhunter is about. I've only watched season one, but the vibe that I got from it were so similar to the vibes that I got in Sadie. Mindhunters is set in the late 1970s in which two FBI agents are tasked with interviewing serial killers to solve open cases. And it is kind of like, how do you call that? The first events of psychocriminology? I don't know what that term is but they are kind of like inventing the term of a serial killer and what goes on inside of the serial killer's mind. And I loved that show so much. So I should definitely check out season two. I don't know why I've continued on with it still. I'm just really bad at keeping my attention on watching series lately. And with Sadie, I forgot her main character's name. Oh my god. <laughs> Sabine, you stupid bitch. The main character's name is literally the title, you dumb fuck. A missing girl on a journey of revenge. A serial-like podcast following the clues she's left behind. And an ending you won't be able to stop talking about. Sadie hasn't had an easy life. Growing up on her own, she's been raising her sister Maddie in an isolated small town, trying her best to provide a normal life and keep their heads above. And keep their heads above. Above? And keep their heads above. Ab I can't say that word. <laughs> above water. Oh my god. But when Maddie is found dead, Sadie's entire world crumbles. After a somewhat botched police investigation, Sadie is determined to bring her sister Skiller to justice and hits the road following a few meager clues to find him. When West McRae and he reminded me so much of like one of the main characters in Mindhunter, was it Holton? 
Holden, I think was his name, a radio personality working on a segment about small forgotten towns in America, overhears Sadie's story at a local gas station. He becomes obsessed with finding the missing girl. He starts his own podcast as he tracks Sadie's journey, trying to figure out what happened, hoping to find her before it is too late. It was so interesting to be inside of Sadie's mind and her trying to figure out who killed her sister and everything that was going on. And I kind of, like I said, felt as if like Wes McRae, who had this podcast about trying to find Sadie, was Holden in Mindhunter because he was having all of these interviews with people in Sadie's town. And in Mindhunter, the two police officers interview all of these people who are in jail as well. And I thought it was so cool. It is not as if like really intense, big things, violent things happen, but there's this constant dark nagging feeling that something bad is gonna happen. And it was just so cool to read about. It was so cool to watch the show. Definitely something that I would recommend you to check out. So those were all of the recommendations that I had for like either series or books if you like those types of vibes. I hope that you will like check them out, read them, watch them, let me know your opinions and whether you think I made some good comparisons between the series and books. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!